Hi, this is Kian. I just want to introduce a tool to you for people using the Forge Viewer that I think is going to be really useful. So first of all, this is um, a Chrome extension. I'm actually going to use it inside Brave. So if you go along to the Chrome Web Store and search for the extensions, just search for LMV, you're going to find LMV Developer Tools. If you click on this, you can take a look at this. At this, the time of writing, it's one version 1.6. I think 1.7 is on its way. But let's take a look and add this. To, to I'm happy to, to be using Brave, but you know you can also be using Chrome, of course. So now you should have this added. I'm going to go up here and pin it because it's something that I'm going to use a lot and are already using a lot. So the next thing I'm going to do is just go across and let's just basically look any any um, website that, that embeds um, LMV or the Forge Viewer is is going to find this useful, particularly when you're debugging stuff. But let's take a look at, at Dasher. If I click on demo here, then it's going to load um, a version of the, the, the Forge Viewer inside the Dasher site. And so this is the, the standard sort of demo model, which is the nest building uh, just outside Zurich. And so this is, you know, this is our, our, our LMV instance. Um, what I can do now is click on here to bring up the LMV dev tools. Now, out of the box, you can see the, the, so there's a few things that are immediately useful. So here you can see the uh, model that's been loaded. It's got it, you can copy its URN to the clipboard. This is the file name. You shouldn't need to worry about that too much. Uh, visibility here, you can, if you toggle this off, it's going to just going to disappear. If you want to see the bounding box, then you can click on that. Then it's sort of, this is a slightly strangely aligned uh, building, but that's why the bounding box is, is what it is there. Uh, we can get rid of the bounding box. You want to download the the, the bubble or the content of this particular file, whether it's SVF or SVF2, then you can you can do so there. Now, so this is kind of you know slightly useful or somewhat useful, I would say. It's interesting and it's probably more valuable if you have multiple models, but it is a, an, e an easy way to get the information, which is good. The thing that that, that I've immediately found to be really interesting is the hit monitor. So this is something that I do all the time inside LMV. I'm forever sticking a breakpoint in uh, some sort of on select code call so that uh, so that I can find out the the DBID of a particular piece of geometry inside in inside a model. So here, as you as you're moving around the model, essentially we're getting all that information immediately uh, based on the cursor position. So when you, you you hover over somewhere else, you just get the the client position but when you're over geometry it does a hit test and it tells you exactly what um, what geometry you're pointing at so super useful this is going to be extremely valuable for people just for that I think uh, next up let's so we can turn off the hit monitor I mean this is interesting as well the world axis if you're curious about what how, how your model is oriented you sort of it throws in the the, the classic XYZ uh, RGB, interestingly, you know what, this is the, you know, you can always remember this because X is 100, which is red, uh, green or Y is is uh, 010, and then blue is Z, which is uh, 001, so RGB. So anyway, interesting, or not. Um, we can turn that off. The, the, another a really interesting piece of capability, and this I actually had to make a few changes to Dasher because it wasn't displaying properly initially, but now it, it, it's updated, so so it's it's working properly. And this is the mini map. Now this is a, a core piece of, of functionality that typically depends on AEC model data being available for your model. In this case, um, we're using Navisworks inside um, inside Dasher, so so the mini map extension is not something that I've taken the time to to integrate into Dasher yet. But what's interesting here is as you're moving around, and I'll zoom out a little bit on here. This has got the zoom factor, zoom distance, which is a, or zoom direction is different from Dasher, which sometimes um, gets me a little bit confused, but it's not, not a big deal. But essentially, as you move around, you can see the view direction and then the clipping planes for the view. So you get the new and the far planes here. So as we as we sort of rotate this around, and at the moment it's it's on auto. So those are not those planes are being adjusted kind of directly, um, automatically by the viewer. But if we turn auto off, then we can manually adjust the clipping planes, and this is where things get really fun. 
Um, so if we, for example, move the clipping plane forward here, and we can move that the far clipping plane inwards, so you can see in the, the right-hand sort of view what's happening there. And then, you know, as you rotate the... Uh, let's get this out of the way. You know, as you as you and we can zoom in and out, which also sort of throws things around a little bit. But there we can we can. It's it's really really interesting. It's like some sort of M.C. Escher meets uh, you know Interstellar um, in terms of everything. You know, the, all the dimensionality. The, it's it's very fun. I just love it. I could I could look at this all day long. Anyway, I don't know how useful that is particularly for. It. I mean, it is useful. You'll be able to find a use for it in terms of deep, you know, understanding view information but i just find it i find it super cool anyway there you go that's uh that's the mini map and the the auto clipping planes i've toggled that back off because otherwise things get a little bit confusing um another another mode actually i'll show you this quickly for the mini map is that you can um let's turn this off you can you can uh have this dock essentially so you have a full mini map view in in this side Again, if you, the the rotate uh, zoom zoom direction is different, but you can you can you know essentially see the mini map docked like that as well. So we'll, we'll turn that off um, and then close that. Bring back the dev tool. So this is you know what you can do directly inside uh, a, an LMV hosting product or or client you know, project like Dasha. Um, but you can also go ahead and take this model elsewhere. So there's a tool called LMV Ninja, which um, some of you may have used. It's super useful. Um, here, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and, and, and click this. Now, this is going to... Actually, there's a little bug at the moment. It's, it's, it's passing in the URL, but it's not HTTPS. So I've loaded this, this one here separately, and that's what's being fixed in 1.7. So that should be working by the time you give this a try hopefully so here what is pre-populated the urn information you know that where you need to download it from etc and then all you need to do is hit well you can choose the endpoint you know if you want to try the staging or, or development versions you can i i'm just going to use a production version which i think is 1.3 uh, uh, let me see it, it'll tell me anyway when i load but it's um 7.38 i want to say so let's set this custom model and then we can click on launch viewer so 7.381 is the current production version and we can see that the, the this particular model is then loaded directly inside inside this this instance of lmv inside this page but what is really interesting about L lmv ninja is then you can go ahead and enable all these various extensions that are there to test things out. So let's take a, just an example of, of one particular extension that I found that I find super cool and I've used quite a bit in the past, and that's the Visual Cluster extension. So if we enable that, it's going to add in our Visual Cluster button, which actually doesn't work if I think about it, because I have inside Dasher we've had to do a little bit of work to make it to make it work. But you can, you know, anyway, you you, you get the picture. I can disable that. It's going to turn it off. Um, the same with, uh, let's see, some others. You know, if you want to disable, for example, the, the you know, measurement, you should be able to see stuff here. Um, oh, where's the autodesk.measure? Anyway, I can't, I'm, I'm my, you know, I, I can't see it off the top of my head. Anyway, there's a bunch of different extensions that you can just, you can just try out. I think it's a fantastic thing. So there's a split screen extension, which sort of gives us a stereoscopic, um, view. I don't know if it's stereoscopic actually, whether it really is, um, or whether it's just with two views. Anyway, you can give it a try. So that is, um, let's go back to Dasha. That is it. I mean, there is an, some additional capability here if you've got it like a, I presumably if that's a custom um, test bed of some sort. I haven't um, investigated this and I don't think that this is going to be immediately useful to me, but it, but you can, you know, you, you may be able to give this a try and see if there's something you can use it for. Um, but that's it. So I, I think you should, you know, head on over to the to the um, Chrome Web Store, in a, you know, and in a, and and add this extension, this very useful extension, into whichever browser, Chromium-based browser that you're using. I mean, I, I use Chrome, but more these days I tend to use Brave a little bit more than I do Chrome, um, and give it a try. Well, I hope you found this useful. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.